So, let's get ready for our lesson. Amen? Uh, we are in, if you open up your handout, your program, your bulletin, whatever you prefer to call it, um, we are almost at the end of 2 Corinthians. And um, you can think of this lesson, I don't, didn't give it a name, but you can think of this lesson as Paul is finishing up his defense of his apostleship to the Corinthians. Remember, the whole background is that the Corinthians were saying, Paul, you're, when, in your letters you sound so bad, so strong, so bold, but in person you're weak. Uh, uh, you're not a good uh, speaker. You don't have the proper letters from Jerusalem to be a speaker. Um, we're questioning whether or not you are a real apostle. So he, in these last few chapters, he's been giving defense. Remember last, last week he said, hey, I want to show you uh, that I'm a, a disciple, I'm an apostle, I have been called, I have been sent by God. Look at what I've been through. I've been shipwrecked, I've been beaten, you know, and he goes, I've been in danger of countrymen, I've been in danger from Gentiles, I have, I, I've been uh, in jail, I've been in all these things, and, and God still has me standing, God still has me doing ministry. So in chapter number 12, he continues, look at verse number 1. I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained. I will go to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ 14 years ago who was caught up in the third heaven, whether he was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. So I'll boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I will not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. Even if I boast, Whatever I boasted about is true. I'm not making stuff up. Anybody know people that make up stuff to boast? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, it, when, we, when we were in church, my wife and I growing up, we had testimony services. You know, anybody ever been a part of a testimony service where people jump up and they give their testimony? And, and, we, and somebody coined this phrase, test a lying. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about stuff, we're boasting about stuff that's not really. Paul said, if I did boast, it would be true. He said, but I refrain, refrain so no one would think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because these surpassing great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, we call that the big heads. That's what my wife would say to me. Your head gets too big. Big head. I was given a, listen, a thorn in my flesh. It was a messenger of Satan to torment me. In the, in, I think it's in the a New King James, in the King, King James, it says, it was a messenger of Satan to buffet me. That is like, it was beating me. It was hitting me. And verse number eight says, three times. How many times? Three times. Three times I, look, underline this word, I pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me. Now this is Apostle Paul. We have a whole, I think it's 17 books in the New Testament written by this man. So what we know about church life, what we know about a lot of things we learn from this man. And here is Apostle Paul saying, I'm praying to God three times. God, please. Mm -hmm. Amen. Take this away from me. This pain, this torment that Satan has put against me. Are you, are you feeling it? But verse 
number nine says, this is God, but God, he said to me, you ought to underline, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect when I act like I'm strong. When I say to God, I got this. I don't need you. I got this. I got degrees. I got skills. I got bad skills. Anybody? You trying to do it yourself? And he said, God responded to me after I asked him three times to take this thing away. My grace is sufficient means that's all that you, I got, my grace is all that you need. Because my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. How many of us are walking around boasting about our weaknesses? Therefore, I'll boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties. For when I am weak, that's when I'm really strong. Amen? Amen. So let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at, let's look at a couple things here. If you look on the left-hand side, you see where uh, I've broken it down into a couple different sections. I don't know if we'll get through all of those sections, but look at the first section. The first section, he talks about this man that has been caught up into the third heaven, up, up into what we recognize as paradise. So if you see the, the, the first, um, uh, the sky then the clouds, and above that, what we call heaven where God is, that's the third heaven. The sky, the atmosphere, the clouds, then above that is what we would say where God is, that's the third heaven. So Paul says, you've heard these accounts of people who've seen it on movies where people say, I went to see God. I was, I was, they thought I was dead, but I was in heaven for a minute and 58 seconds or something. You know, there was one that came out like that. So Paul says, I know a guy that went up into heaven. So, in my, in my notes there, you see, he says, let me move on to visions and revelations. Let's talk about visions and revelations. Let's see how Paul got saved in the first place, that we call saved, or how he came to a saving knowledge, how he met Jesus. He was on his way to persecute Christians. He was on a road called the Damascus Road, and, and he was going, he had letters, he had all the, the authority to go and lock up Christians. And he said there was this light that came and knocked him down to the ground. And so here's a man that met Jesus in the form of this light on a Damascus road. He, and then he gives him this vision, he gives him this understanding that there's a guy named Ananias it's because after he saw this, had this vision, he was blind. And they had to lead it into, and he said, God gave me this knowledge, this vision, this revelation that the man named Ananias was going to come touch him, and he received his sight. Uh, also, remember Paul in, in Acts where he says he, he, saw, he was going over, I forgot where, he was going over to another section to do ministry, and at night he has this vision that says, come over to Macedonia. We need you to come and minister. And I, Paul's all set to go this direction, but God gives him this vision that he's going to go this way. So Paul, has, he has visions. He has these revelations of God. He's, he's on a ship. Remember, later in the book of Acts, he's on a ship. He's a prisoner. He's gone to Jerusalem, and, and the ship is in this great storm. And, a, and the angel comes and speaks to Paul and says, hey, don't worry. Nobody will die. You just, you just, you, you just have them do what I tell you to do. So here's Paul. He's, had, he's a man that has visions. He has revelations. And now he is, a, he is testifying that about 14 years ago, he goes to heaven. 
Why is this important that I'm sharing this with you? Why is it important that Paul shared with the Corinthians this? Because the Judaizers, the folks that were saying Paul was not an apostle, they had, they had no experiences like this. Oh, you see? They, they couldn't say, oh, I went to heaven too. Or they couldn't say, hey, I, I've, I've got all these visions. They couldn't say, I've touched people and healed them. They couldn't say any of that. So Paul says, I really don't want to boast. And then he begins to speak about himself in the third person. He said, I know a man. But it was really him. I know a man that went up and, and, and went up into heaven and I heard things in heaven that no one that is in the flesh, no human is supposed to hear. And I can't even tell you about it because if I tell you about it, I gotta kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell you about them. So you see here, he's caught up in the third heaven, he hears these things. He said, I won't boast about myself, but I'll boast about a man like that. And he said, if I did boast, it would be true. So he's making this last defense of his apostleship. Look, it says in the next one section, verses 7 and 8, he is given this thorn in the flesh. I want, to, I want to kind of just to persist. Praise the Lord. Oh. and they've written books. I remember one of the hardest things for me was uh, when, when I was at New Seasons, the mother church in San Diego, and I became a pastor, so they appointed me, Santiago, an armor bearer. And an armor bearer was a, 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 another man that would, if I went out or if I was about to preach, that person was kind of walked with me and hung out with me, and they wanted to carry my Bible and carry my briefcase, and if I needed anything, go get coffee for me. If I was going to preach somewhere else, they'd drive me there. I had a hard time with that. Because I could see what that could do to you. I don't even carry my own Bible. I got a guy carrying my Bible. Next thing you know, my head is, are you hearing me? And so, in order that there might be balance in this man's life, God allowed Satan to bring this thorn into his flesh so he wouldn't be leaning too much with the big head. He could get balanced out. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> You're just looking at me like, what are you talking about? Some of you know, because I had, man, when I played basketball, man, I was a trash talker. Man, you can't stop this. Oh! And my teammates would say, go back, go back. Ah! It's so easy for a 
this is one of the things that uh, when I was ordained that we were warned against. People have put you on a pedestal. But then they'll knock you off. That's why you need God elevates you. Anyway, so let me, let's go. So the word, there's balance, there's this balance between the blessings of God and the burden that he would allow to come in your life. In James chapter 1, it says, count it all joy when you enter various trials and tribulations. For the testing of your faith produces something. It produces a perseverance. And, and, and that's why I have trouble with, with gospel Message that is only talking about blessing you. If that's all that someone preaches is the blessings of God and nothing about the tribulations, you're off kilter. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> it says, so because of these revelations, I was given a thorn to keep me from being conceited. It was a messenger of Satan. That word thorn is like a sharp stake. Thank you. It's a, thank you, my sweetie. It's a, it's a sharp stake. So he says, I have this thorn in the flesh. Now, I've heard, I've been around a long time, and I've heard a lot of people preach on this, and some people want to identify what the thorn is. Some says, well, Paul in his letter to Galatians says that he wrote this letter in big letters, meaning that his sight was bad. So they said, well, the sight was his thorn in his flesh. Some says he had some other kind of uh, illness. We don't know what the thorn was. And guess what? We don't, we, I think it's a good thing that we don't know. You just need to know that it was something that buffeted him, that hurt him, that was painful. Well, I don't think we need to know what it is. Because we get sometimes too, too much knowledge for us is, is a problem. So he has this thorn in the flesh, and he asked God three times to take it away. Are you, are you following me? Here's the good part. In, in the next section, verses 9 through 10, he says, God said to me, my grace is sufficient. Oh! Here's a verse, I, I, I don't have the, the, the address. It says, where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Yeah. It means that whatever the, the need is, grace can meet that need. Yeah. So Paul says to, the, 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 uh, uh, Jesus says to Paul, my grace is sufficient. Write this down. Grace is God giving to us what we don't deserve. Grace is God giving to us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God holding back what we do deserve. So, just like Job, just like Job, God allows Satan to come and buffet Paul. But he says, my grace is sufficient, my power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul says, therefore, I will boast all the more in my weaknesses so that Christ's power might rest on me. Can we do that? I hope that you remember this verse. And Paul says, therefore, I take pleasure in my weaknesses. I take pleasure in hardships. I take pleasure in persecutions and difficulties because I know when I'm weak, he's strong. Here's a verse that I like to, uh, 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 a phrase from a verse that I like. It says, uh, we are complete in him. I'm complete in him. So what, where I fall short, he makes up. And so in my weaknesses, if I recognize my weaknesses, that allows him to make up what I don't have. Yes. But if I'm trying to handle it myself, he said, go ahead and handle it with your bad self. Are you? Yeah. So, hey, my grace is sufficient. 
And so when you, when you look at the blessings in your life, and you also look at the troubles in your life, you can say, well, God's using this to balance me out. Whole different perspective, right? Yeah. None of y'all can that do it. You don't pop, do you? You don't pop with God, do you? You don't know y'all say, why me? None of y'all say that, do you? Now, when you woke, wake up in the morning, there's a pain somewhere in your life, and you say, God, now I'm glory in this because this is when I'm going to be strong. I say, won't he do it? Yes, he do it. Amen. I know he will do it. Amen. <sighs> Think of this. We'll make this last, last point here. Then we'll cover this last part. Think of this. I told you that also on my prayer list for this year is I'm asking God to Deliver me from procrastination, and I don't feel like it. I'm asking God to deliver me from procrastination, and here's the second one. I don't feel like it. Do you know what I don't feel like it means? I have the time, I have the know-how, but I don't feel like doing it. Amen. Y'all look at me. Pastor, you're the only one. We don't, we don't know what that is. <laughs> Sometimes... Dog, I just don't feel like it. I got something I need to do. I know how to do it. I have time to do it, but I don't feel like it. Anybody ever say, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I don't feel like going to church today. I don't want to go to Bible study tonight. So imagine Apostle Paul. He has to, he's writing these 17 letters to these churches. He's going around on missionary journeys. He's preaching the word of God. He's dealing with all this craziness in all the places where he has been, even with a thorn in the flesh. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Even with a thorn in the flesh. And here I am, <laughs> with all the, I got computers, I got a comfy chair at house. I work from home. I got my own home office. I got a printer. I got two printers there. I got a refrigerator. I got everything I need. I'm saying I don't feel like it. I mean, I mean, we got two cars sitting in the garage. So if I need to go somewhere, all I have to do is get in the car and go. And I'm saying I don't feel like it. Imagine this man with a thorn in his flesh yes, Lord. having to write a letter, having to get on a boat to go to Ephesus, to ride a camel or ride a donkey just to go and do what he has to do, yes. to be beaten and whipped and spend nights and days in jail. And we're talking about, I ain't going to Bible store tonight. I got a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I went to work all day. Yeah. And you know you didn't even work while you were at work. <laughs> Am I making a point? Somebody says it's tight, but it's right. Amen. <laughs> let, let me just give you these last, last things and we're going to close out because we want to go for our meeting. In the last, I'll just read them and, and you can kind of get the gist of them. And that verses 11 through 21, as he's making, closing down this, this time that he's spending with them, he says, after all I've been through with you, you really should have commended me. I'm the one that brought you the gospel. I'm the one that wrote these letters to you. I'm the one that sent people over to check on you. I'm the, I'm the one, not the Judaizers, who perform signs and wonders and miracles in your presence. These other guys have not done none of that. And he said, if I loved you more, 
Will you love me back? He said, listen, remember, we never exported you. And in, and in that latter verses, he said, I'm going to come to you the third time. But I'm not going to be a burden to you. But remember last week, he said, even I robbed other churches. I took offerings from other churches so I could preach to you without cost. He said, but I'm afraid when I get there. So can I just use my vernacular? Some of y'all going to be acting all crazy. Look what he said. When, I fear when I come that there will be discord, there will be jealousy, there will be fits of rage, there will be selfish ambition, there will be slander and gossip and arrogance and disorder. And I'm going to be grieved. I'm going to be saddened by the fact that you haven't even repented of your sin. Somebody say, Amen. 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 So, Say, say, say this sometime in, during your day. Lord, when I'm weak, you're strong. Amen. When that boss will get on your, on your nerve, and Lord, when I'm weak, you're strong. When you're dealing with your kids, uh, Lord, <laughs> I, when I'm weak, you're strong. When you're looking at them bills, <clears throat> Lord, <laughs> when I'm weak, Thank you, Lord, for the lesson from Paul. And if the great Apostle Paul went through this, what about us? Father, I pray that we would overcome our weaknesses by acknowledging them and allowing you to be strong in our lives. Help us to overcome procrastination and I don't feel like it. And replace it with a commitment to serve you. Replace it with discipline to serve you, God. Lord, may we all say, like that song we, we play sometimes, Lord, I surrender all. Can't do this without you. Can't live the Christian life without you. Can't serve you without you. We give your name praise.